Hey there, my name is Gabriel and in this episode I will give you 10 tips how to improve your iPhone footage and make it look more cinematic. One of my most viewed videos on that channel was shot on iPhone. When I was on Mallorca I dropped accidentally my camera and I broke it. The only other camera I had was the iPhone 7. So I shot 80% of that video on iPhone 7. And guess what? Nobody even noticed that I shot it on iPhone 7. Nobody wrote me, hey, your video sucks, you shot it on iPhone. So if you follow the tips I'm gonna share with you now, people will not even notice that you are shooting on iPhone. First one, composition and camera angles. No matter, are you on the most epic place on earth, if you don't know how to compose your shots, they will look just like the regular tourist footage. I have for you two very simple tricks how to improve your composition. Immediately go in your camera settings and turn on the grid. And the grid will help you to follow the rule of third. That means two things for me. Or place your most important subject on one of the lines. Or do central composition and put your subject in the center. The second thing is the camera angles. Experiment with different camera angles. Most of the people when they go on vacation, they take the photos from the chest level or if they have camera, from the eye level. And that makes all the photos to look the same. When I'm on vacation, first thing I'll take the photo from the chest level. After that I'll go down on the ground. Try to capture some footage from low angle and then I'll go up and see how it will look from top. Like that I'm getting variety of shots and I can see what looks the best. Most of the time the most epic shots are taken close on the ground level. When you bring the iPhone closer to the ground, two things are happening. First, you introduce a lot of foreground and that gives you a lot of depth. And the second thing, your subject is looking taller and bigger which makes it appear more epic. Light is extremely important. No matter if you're shooting with DSLR camera, with mirrorless or with iPhone, light is extremely important and depending on how you control the light, you can create different mood in your footage. But light is even more important for phone footage. The phone has such a small sensor that if the light is not good, the footage will not look that decent. On the Apple presentation, when they are presenting the shooting capabilities of iPhone 11, they produce some amazing Hollywood uh, movies with it. But they forgot to mention one very important point. To produce that footage with iPhone, they were using lighting equipment which cost thousands of dollars. So to be able to produce high-end quality video, you have to control the light. I'm editing the video and I noticed that I forgot to mention a few tips. The first one, always shoot on sunrise or on sunset. Like that your video will look always nice. It's the most beautiful and the most free light source you're gonna find out there. The second tip, he shoot next to the window. That's a free softbox, like here. The window light is extremely beautiful and extremely pleasing. Now I will show you which lights I'm taking with me while I'm traveling. Now, very often I'm running and gunning, and especially when you're producing a travel video, you don't want to carry some huge light with you. So I'm constantly carrying with me a small aperture light, which is very handy. It's a small LED light, but it's very bright. It's very handy when you're going to some museums and usually in museums it's very dark and they don't allow you to take professional equipment with you. So very often I'm taking it with me. The second light which I can recommend you is an RGB light. And I'm using it at the moment. It is a Chinese big brother of my small aperture. The cool part is that you can use it as a regular light. You can control the light balance. You can use it as a RGB light as well and you can change the colors. So you can make it shine whatever color you want. Both lights are very handy and fun to use. So something like that can really step up your game a little bit. Most of the videos on YouTube will tell you that you have to move your camera cinematically. But they're forgetting one point. Your subject should move cinematically as well. 
If you want to have a cinematic video, your camera should move in a cinematic way and your subject should move in cinematic way as well. Now let's check four cinematic movements that you should master. First one, pushing. Second is the track shot. Third is the different panning shots. And the fourth is the review shot. Now let's move to the people in the shot and what to do with them. The first thing you have to do is to find out how you're gonna move your camera. Second, communicate with your model how you're gonna move the camera and what the model should do. Usually what I'm doing is that I'm telling my girlfriend, walk from point A to point B, walk slowly or walk fast. So give clear instruction what the model should do. Like that you have a good synchron. Change the hands with which you touch. Second, check a lot of photography poses. Very often we are using a lot of photography tricks like fixing the hair behind the ear, smiling, touching the face. So integrate all those photography tricks which make a good Instagram photos in your videos. Just make the movement fluent. If your model is fixing the hair, that's the first pose. And the second is coming and smiling. The movement between the two poses should happen very fluently, so the model should fix the hair and then slowly turn her head and smile into the camera. If the movement is choppy, it will look horrible. So you have to give very clear direction to the person you're shooting with. And like that you'll be in very good synchron and your video will improve dramatically. iPhone 11 comes with two lenses, wide angle and a regular one. iPhone 11 Pro is coming with three lenses, white angle, regular one and telephoto. So use that for your advantage. When you're on location, don't leave it without having three shots. The first one is the white angle shot. Use it as an establishing shot to show you the environment and where you are. Use the regular shot to show your subject and what the subject is doing. Third, capture a lot of details. The iPhone lens you can go very close to the subject so you can mostly catch a macro shot. When you're on location, shoot variety of shots. Like that when you come later to edit your videos, you have a lot of shots to choose and you have a lot of variety which will make your video more rich. If you don't have the possibility or the mood to buy iPhone 11 Pro so you can operate with three different lenses and you're more flexible recording with your phone, I have another solution for you. Moment lens. You can buy phone case and separate lenses and you can get a wide angle lens and telephoto lens. I think the whole set will cost you around 250 euros but it's still cheaper than buying iPhone 11 Pro. For example, my old iPhone 7. I can just invest 250 euros in those lenses for phone and I mostly have the new iPhone. So no matter which phone you have, there are solutions out there which are extending the capabilities of our phones. If you're looking to buy external lenses for your phone, I would really recommend you to buy the expensive one. I was buying the cheaper one from Amazon which are like for 10 to 30 euros some pack and they're horrible. So better spend a little bit more money but have some quality stuff. Next point is sound design. I cannot stress enough how important is the sound design. When we are watching a movie, more than 50% of the information we get through our ears. The sound design can trigger emotion. The sound design can prepare the viewer for what is going to happen. So just spend a little bit more time while you are editing the video and add some additional sounds. Let me show you an example. When you're adding those small sounds, you're creating atmosphere. 
and while the viewer is watching, you're triggering in his brain his memories when he was on the beach, how the waves are hitting the beach, the birds. So with all those additional sounds, you're catching the imagination of the viewer. You're inviting him in your world, which you create. So the sound design is extremely important. Because you can have a crappy footage with good sound and it will be watchable. But if you have a really good footage with crappy sound, it will not be watchable. Number 5. After the cinematic movement are coming the cinematic transitions. To spice up your videos, start doing in-camera transitions. The in-camera transition is a separate video by itself, but in this video I will show you two types of transition which will spice up your footage. The first one is the wipe transition. You can wipe your phone up, down, left and right, it doesn't matter. Just choose two directions, remember them and do them every time you start your video. Here it how it looks. Fix the composition, press the record button, wipe up, record as much as you need and when you finish the video, before you stop recording, wipe one more time up. The second transition you really have to master is the mask transition. This transition can make your video look amazing. How does it work? While you are shooting you have to find an object which will pass your camera. How do you create the mask transition in post-production? You have the two clips, you just place them over each other. On top is going to be the first one which you want to mask out. After that, find the first frame where the object is appearing. Draw your mask and then is coming the fun part where you have to animate the mask and usually you have to do it frame by frame. It takes some time and it's a little bit annoying because you are painting the mask frame by frame, but the result is really good. Most of the time I'm shooting travel videos and when I'm shooting travel videos I always record in 60 frames per second. There is one reason for that. In post-production I can slow down the footage two times and it will look more epic and it will look more cinematic. When I want to capture some epic movement I will shoot it in slow motion. Here is an example of the same movement in 60 frames per second and in 240 frames per second. The difference is really huge. There is a reason why I don't shoot constantly in slow motion. First, the slow motion requires a lot of sunlight, otherwise the quality is not that good. And second, the quality is not that good. When you are shooting 60 frames per second, the camera is capturing higher quality than when it's shooting 240 frames per second. Ah, and there is a third reason. When you're shooting slow motion, the files are huge. Exposure. Now, here I have two points. The first one, when you're shooting with your iPhone, always walk exposure. If you don't walk your exposure while you're shooting, the camera will be hunting. And especially will be hunting while you're shooting slow motion. It looks horrible. So, just before you start shooting the clip, walk your exposure. Now, the next step in your filming career with your phone is to use programs like Filmic Pro. And there is only one main reason why most people are using Filmic Pro. And that's to control the motion blur. Why do you need to care about the motion blur? If there is no motion blur when subject is moving, the whole movement looks a little bit robotic. Because naturally, our eyes are seeing the fast moving subject a little bit blurry. So when you have footage which doesn't have motion blur, it doesn't look so realistic to us. To be able to achieve motion blur in your videos, you have to gain full control of the settings of the camera, which sounds perfect. You install Filmic Pro, you put the shutter speed on 120 frames per second, but there is a huge bummer. When you go outside and the weather is sunny, there is too much light and your shutter speed is very slow and your footage will be overexposed. So if you really want to control your camera and make your footage to look cinematic, you have to buy as well camera filters. Power Pro has amazing option for phone, but unfortunately it doesn't fit 100% on the new iPhone 11. It's coming with 3 filters and a mounter for your phone. So you just mount it in front of your lens and it will look like that. Down, 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 down. So, high, 
So with the Power Pro filter you can use the regular lens but you can't use the wide angle lens. I really hope Power Pro will release a little bit bigger filter and like that you'll be able to use programs like Filmic Pro with the wide angle lens as well. If you want your iPhone to be your main camera, you need one accessory and that's a gimbal. The main advantage of the gimbal is that it will enhance your cinematic movement. If you have a tracking shot and you have to track the subject for 50 meters, even that the iPhone has some stabilization in the camera, still the movement will be very shaky. When you have the gimbal, the movement will be buttery smooth and that will increase the value of your footage. For phones, the gimbals are very cheap. The best one on the market is the DJI, DJI Osmo 3 at the moment. It costs around 100 euros, so there is no reason not to buy a gimbal, if you're really gonna use your phone as a main shooting camera. On your iPhones you have one amazing feature and that's time lapse. Most people really forget about that and the time lapse can really spice up your videos and especially if you're doing a travel video, it's perfect to put a time lapse for a transition. So what I usually do is grab my phone, turn on the time lapse and then start walking slowly to some subject and keep the subject in the center. And that's how you create a hyperlapse. The trick here is to move very slowly and fluently. A little bit of patience, a little bit pain in your arms of holding the phone for a very long time on one place and the result is amazing. Now, the next thing is to smash the like button, subscribe, share your laugh in the comments. If you didn't like the video, smash the dislike button three times so you have luck and see you in the next episode. Ah, don't forget to integrate all the 10 tips I gave you that will definitely improve your footage.